Are you wanting to get the most out of Google Keep? Well, in today's video, I'm going to give you a seven part checklist so you can be more efficient and more productive while using Keep Notes. Hello everyone, Scott Friesen here at Simpletivity, helping you to get more done and enjoy less stress. And in today's video, we're going to be looking at the desktop version of Google Keep. But of course, I encourage you to download the mobile app since you're going to be using it there as well. And let's get started with number one, labels. It's so important that you create a few labels and keep labels in mind as you organize all of your notes here in Keep. On the left-hand side, all we have to do is hit edit labels and we can create as many labels as we want. We can even come in here and rename the labels that we need to if we've created a few in advance. You want to keep labels in mind because as you go about your day and as you break things down either by areas of your life or department or urgency, you can simply click on these labels and quickly and easily find the notes that you're looking for. Now, number two on our checklist is using pinned notes. By default, your notes may look a little scattered and will continue to fill up the bulk of our page here. So for example, if I take a new note uh, right here and I close this note, it's gonna fill this void right here. And all of my existing notes are gonna continue to be pushed down on this screen. Now it is true, I can drag my notes around and put them in an order that I like, but if there's something especially important, maybe like this new office design note, make sure you use the pin note feature. This is gonna bring it to the top of your notes and keep it there. So no matter what else you do down below, your most important notes will appear at the top. Now you can pin as many as you like up here. All you need to do is hit that pin icon. And let's say these are my three most important tasks for the day. You can continue to reorganize them as you want. Maybe I need to address this one first and then I'm gonna do it in this order. So another great way to keep some separation amongst your notes. Now, number three in our list has to do with reminders because of course, with any of our notes, all we need to do is come down here and select remind me and we can select when we would like to be reminded. Now, we can always pick a specific date and time, but Google tries to be helpful by giving us some default times, including later today, tomorrow, and next week. But this tomorrow, for example, how does it come up with this 6.30 a.m. and can we change it? Yes, we can, and you're gonna to want to do this because it's also going to affect your Gmail experience. Up here in the settings, what we can do is select settings, and here we have our reminder default. So for example, maybe I don't want the reminder default to be 6.30, maybe I want it to be 7.30 in the morning, and maybe I want the afternoon to be 2 p.m. and the evening, let's make this one uh, 8.30. How about something like that? I'm going to hit save here. Now you may think that that only affects our reminders here within Google Keep. Here, now you see that tomorrow that reminder is going to be 7.30 and if I push it out to next week, it's going to be 7.30 in the morning. But not only does this affect our Google Keep experience, it affects our Gmail experience. You may be familiar with the snooze feature that if you come over to any one of your messages and you can hit this snooze button, or if you open up a note, you can also hit this snooze button as well. And if I click on this, you can now see that tomorrow it is 7.30 a.m. here as well. This is a setting that you cannot change within Gmail. So for all of you Gmail users, if you're wanting to adjust the default default times here, you have to do it in your Google Keep account. Make sure to come up to settings and here you can adjust your default reminder times. Next, we want to step onto tip number four, and this has to do with checklists themselves. In my example here, I've got a couple of different checklists here. I've got a weekly review, and I've also got a morning routine. But for those of you who may not be familiar with checklists, let's set up a simple one here, just so you know how to convert anything into a checklist or revert it back into its original text. So let's say that I'm creating a few different steps here. These are a few things that I want to do in a particular order. And after I've started to list them out, I say to myself, you know what? It would be very helpful if I could actually make this into a checklist. Well, all you need to do here is select this more icon and come down and say, show checkboxes. And what it will do, it will take your existing text and convert them into checkboxes. Now I can drag them around. I can put them in a different order if I like. But if I ever decide to change my mind, not a problem. I can come down here and say, hide checkboxes 
boxes and it will revert to the text-based format. Let's go back to showing those check boxes and just show you some of the other benefits that we can use with the checklist setup here within Google Keep. Now, as I start to check things off, you can see the completed items down below. Now, I don't have to see all of them if I don't want to. I can hit this uh, arrow here and collapse that screen so I can just see the total number here. But what I like to do is that when I am completed a round of checklists, especially if this is something that I want to use again in the future, I can come down to this more area and I can say uh, delete checked items if I want to get rid of them altogether, or I can say uncheck all items. So in this case, if I select uncheck all items, it's as if I've reverted the entire checklist. And now it's ready for a coming week or for me to repurpose this in the future. But another great tip when it comes to check boxes is that you can drag them over and create subtasks. So for example, here I've got step one as the main check box, but I have step two and step three down below. Now they work very similar here as you can see I've checked that step one off uh, um, uh, down below it's, it's showing that it's embedded under step one and I can uncheck it here but what if I've actually completed everything in this phase what if there's three or four or maybe ten different check boxes but I know I've completed them all the great thing is, is I can check this box off and it will check off all of my subtasks underneath so another way that you can use this checkbox system here within Google Keep. Now, moving on to number five, this happens to be perhaps one of my favorites, especially when I am out and maybe I'm taking a picture of a poster. Maybe I need to take a picture of a label somewhere. I don't have the digital copy of it, but I want to be able to convert that text. So in this case, I've got something here of a thumbnail and all I have is the image. But what if I'd like to grab the text from this image? Google Keep makes it very, very easy for us to do so. Again, we want to come down to this more option here. And if you have an image that has text, you will see this option here, grab image text. If I select this, immediately what it will do is scan and grab all the text in this image and bring it down here. It's done a great job. It's even formatted it in the correct way. It's got the correct spelling as well. Now, number six is something that we don't want to forget, and that is the ability to collaborate collaborate with others. With any of your notes, you can add additional collaborators. One good example from my own personal life is that my wife and I have a grocery shopping list here within Keep, and I've added her as a collaborator because we never know who's going to be shopping next, and we both want to have access to it. We also want to be able to add things to it as well. So if you come up to any note here and select this collaborator option here, all you need to do is start typing in an email address. Now here it's going to pull up some contacts that are already saved to my Gmail account. So I can just select this uh, account here, uh, hit that checkbox, and now this individual will be notified that they are now having access to this particular note. They don't have access to all of my notes, but only this particular note. So I can collaborate with them. And if I need to change that, I can always just come here and delete them and remove them from the note as well. Please note that up in settings, if you feel the need to disable sharing, you can do so here as well, right below the reminder defaults option. Now, the final tip I want to give you when setting up or getting the most out of your Google Keep experience has to do with installing the Google Chrome extension. So when you're browsing here on the desktop, you can get the most and quickly gather information as you browse the web. So let's say here I am, I'm browsing and I come across this article, but I don't have time for it right now, but I'd like to come back and review it. With the Google Keep extension installed, all I have to do is click on that that extension and now I can take a note I can say hey read this later this week and I can add a label if I want to uh, it's going to include this link directly into that note so I can come back and view this whenever I like well I hope you enjoyed today's tips and I'd love to hear from you next how do you get the most out of Google Keep please let me know in the comments down below and let me know if you have any additional questions as well thank you so much for watching and remember being productive does not need to be difficult in fact, it's very simple.